I truly believe that we are in a generational silver bull market. It's likely to perform um, unlike anything anyone's ever seen in silver before. The setup is an order of magnitude higher. I think silver will considerably outperform what it did in the 1970s for all the As far as bigger picture, I feel that we're at the end of a 40-year bull market in both stocks and bonds. Uh, they've been uh, tremendous investments for that uh, length of time, starting around 1981, 82. Uh, incredibly, both both of those markets over that entire time have been overall, you know, gaining tremendously. But um, and that's an outlier. Forty years is not typical for uh, even for a secular bull markets. Because of that, I think that uh, we really are at the end. Um, if you look at what's happened with bond uh, prices and yields, yields have shot up. Um, technic there's a technical breakout in terms of the, uh, the levels that yields are at in bonds. If you look at over the first quarter so far, uh, sorry, the first four months already so far this year, um, stocks and bonds are both down about 10%. Many people are surprised, disappointed, and shocked, especially with bonds, uh, especially, you know, if you look at uh, treasuries, which are supposed to be amongst the most uh, stable and safest investments, to see 10% down in like four months is uh, is uh, not pleasant. And I think people will start looking at alternatives. And uh, we were mentioning this earlier. So if you look around at what your options are, there are very few things that are, um, I would say, undervalued or uh, are, are a good value and silver amongst most assets is one of the very few that truly falls into that category. If you look at pricing, if you look at the fundamentals in terms of demand and supply, uh, it's hard it's hard not to see an incredibly uh, compelling investment in silver right now. Silver, like gold, uh, doesn't pay anything in terms of uh, dividend, and um, it uh, there's there's an opportunity cost for holding silver, like holding gold. If you hold these assets, you're holding them for capital gains and not for yield. And so, if you look at what's happened with treasuries, as we mentioned at the beginning, yields are up considerably. And so people can now start to buy, actually buy, buy treasuries seven years out, 10 years out and make somewhere close to two and a half, say 3%. It's not outstanding. It's certainly um, nowhere close to what inflation is paying. So after inflation, you're still a loser. But if you're looking for relative safety and some yield, treasuries have new, newly issued treasuries have become more attractive. And so that is certainly helping to the yields there have helped to push up the dollar the dollar also competes with gold and silver uh, and so a higher dollar makes um, silver more expensive on that relative basis but if you look at silver over the last uh, say two years almost at this point going back to early 2020 when silver uh, absolutely exploded higher in the, uh, the sort of the peak of the pandemic panic uh, went from a low of 12 to all the way to almost 30 dollars it's been in a sideways range since then uh, between about 21 22 and sort of 29 on the upside and uh, it's always possible that there's a little bit lower to go but I don't think that um, realistically the floor in silver is much lower than where we are right now. There's so much demand for silver. We can get into that maybe a little bit afterwards. But uh, there's just so much steady, solid demand for silver um, for multiple reasons that I think that the floor is close to where we are now. And anybody getting uh, involved in silver, investing in silver now has very little sort of downside risk and a whole lot of upside potential. Well, you know, silver, um, it was, uh, it might have been a question of um, availability. Uh, in fact, that's not something that's clear. But uh, if silver was, you know, a, a 
mined um, sort of uh, ounce per ounce more more readily, higher quantities of silver. So it was available on a higher uh, quantity basis. And it has a lot of the same properties as gold. It's relatively, um, it's really di- relatively difficult to find. It's uh, it maintains its value. And then compared to gold, it has utilities in terms of industrial uses and so on. It's reflective, it's conductive. And so if you look back in history, at the very least, um, we're talking about several thousand years already, silver was actually the first true international currency. Uh, the Greeks uh, fashioned the first um, silver coins that were uh, that were used in trade, and that allowed trade to expand. Commerce uh, took off, and people from different nations and different backgrounds started to accept silver as uh, as an item that they would trade that would hold uh, that that had value and that would hold its value against the goods that they were offering up against it. So um, that allowed for a lot of trade to uh, to flourish. And interestingly enough, silver was actually part of our of our money until the 1960s, where in the U.S., Canada as well, it was part of the coinage, and uh, it was eventually removed from there. So you know, we're talking about thousands of years where silver was part of money, and only 50 or 60, the last 50 or 60 years where it's been removed from money. So there's a much much longer history with silver as money than silver without money. So uh, that's why I think that it has, uh, it certainly has a place. It hasn't lost its its beneficial uh, properties, and it's whether it returns as money in some form or not. That's you know up for debate. Anyone's guess. Is it undervalued and likely to be revalued much higher? That I believe absolutely. And so, um, very very attractive asset. Well, the silver that has been that has served as a monetary role has been out in the public and has circulated in the public. And because it has a lower per ounce value, let's say, um, it's easier to use perhaps on a on a transaction basis. If you want to do daily transactions, buying food, buying, uh, you know, sort of uh, smaller value goods, it makes sense to use silver or has made sense for sure to use silver. Think about it was in the coinage, right? So quarters, dollars half dollars, dimes, nickels, that sort of thing. Um, But if you look at what central banks do, uh, if they're going to store a metal for its value and to to perhaps back a currency, which it has, certainly gold has backed currencies as well for hundreds of years. I talk about that in, in one chapter, uh, where I show that uh, you know gold has been part of global reserve currencies as well for going back, I think it's six, seven hundred years or so. Um, the the advantage I would say that gold has is because it has a higher per ounce value. They they need to store less. So if you're if you're not going to use it in day to day transactions, but you're going to use it to store and back your currency, then gold makes sense because you don't need to store as much of it. Um, you know the 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 paper notes, let's say that are issued that are technically backed by that metal, um, are are going to be the ones that are circulating every day. But you need to store less metal in order to back that currency. I truly believe that we are in a generational silver bull market. It's likely to perform um, unlike anything anyone's ever seen in silver before. I know that, that if you look at silver prices today, that might be a little bit more difficult to uh, to uh, to come to terms with. But um, look back on what how silver has performed in the past. It's very likely to repeat that. I mean, a great example is the 70s. Silver was up 3,700% in a decade. Um, and that's when debt to GDP was 35%. Uh, Today we're at nearly four times that. Inflation is very likely to not come under control the way many people think or hope it will. And so the setup is an order of magnitude higher. I think silver will considerably outperform what it did in the 1970s for all these reasons. And it's still very cheap today. It's still 50% below its all-time high. It's about 85% below its inflation-adjusted all-time high. So to try and find something that is this undervalued and has such high upside potential today, I I really don't think you'd find um, anything else. (music) 